What's good, Sauce Mafia? It's Jay Sauce back again with another video, and today is week five of NPBA. Uh, I can't believe it's week five. It it feels like it just started, you know. Um, today we're taking on Coach Pistrockskowitz and the Cherry Grove Chikoritas, who a scary team to play because um, if you remember kicks from week three. Um, the Cherry Grove Chikoritas beat them, and also another one of the better players in the league with a better team in the league two weeks in a row, coming off a, uh, one of the better two-game win streaks I've seen, and we're coming off a pretty bad two-loss streak. So it, it's going to be a tough one. I got to get momentum back. He's going to have momentum rolling. But um, yeah, th this is the team. Just the builder. Um, as you can see, two of his top threats are Cartana and Scissor. And you know what stops both of those? Fortress and Salamence. It was non question those two were coming after the week two performance where they just completely sat on everything. It, it was a matter of time uh, of just picking the other four. I say Iron Bundle just goes ham on, every t on this team like it does every single other team in the league. Um, freeze dry hydro pump ice beam are the three best stab moves when paired together that I've seen. And then it doesn't really matter what else comes in my pin. Those three are the most important three. Um, I will say that I'm not doing a slideshow again this week to explain team builder because I'm lazy and quite honestly, I won't make these videos 15 20 minutes because. I don't think anybody wants to sit here for 40 minutes and listen to me explain why I brought him on for like eight minutes. I guess it's not fun. I'm just going to go for it in the team builder. I mean, sure, it's a little less effort on my part, which I'm not complaining because I got school. But I don't know. I, th I, think, I think some viewers will like it. Let me know um, in the comment section what you prefer and... I'll go back some weeks. I'll probably do it. Some weeks I'm not. Also, another announcement. Uh, I'm going to be recording a trade video or free agency video soon because I made a pretty blockbuster free agency move. And I'm going to gatekeep you guys. I'm not going to tell you what I, what I did. Um, if you've talked to me on Discord, you probably know what I did. But, I mean, there's a whole separate video for that. And... What YouTube would I be if I don't try to get the most views on my content? So I'm going to make one of those. You guys should totally watch it. I think it's going to be great for the team. And yeah, let's go ahead, hop into the team builder. Um, So yeah, I decided to bring Salmons, Fortress, Iron Bundle, Jolteon, Screamtail, and Ursaluna. If those six mons look familiar together, well, that's because after Clinic they put on on week th two versus Pun Pun, I decided just to bring the boys back, back together. You know, this this a vengeance game for me. As you can see by the title of this uh, team, I turned into my avatar state. Um, I'm going to get vengeance because... A three-game losing streak is would not be good at all. <laughs> so, defensive Salamence coming again. Flamethrower, Roost, Hurricane, Draco Meteor. Flamethrower had to come because that way it can actually hit Cartana and Scizor and KO both of them or get close. And then Roost because this thing needs to stay alive. Hurricane and Draco just because... There's not really another move I needed on it. So I ran Intimidate with uh, max HP, um, split defense and spit F, and then 20 in speed just to speed creep if he decides to speed creep me. Um, this thing's going to be massive. Uh, next we have Fortress, Rocky Helmet, Body Press, Gyro Ball, Rapid Spin, and Stealth Rock because Rocks were like okay against his team, I mean. If we go back and look at it, I mean, he's got one, two, three mods weak to it, and like one remover, two removers if you count Scissor. But I, I felt like it's so good against the team and Rapid Spin to keep the 
rocks away because I expect Mammoth Swine to have it. And then Gyro Ball Body Press, just so I can. I'm naturally going to have max defense in this matchup, and there's no reason for me to have any speed investment. So those two are just going to be the biggest hitting moves that I can find on this mod. Next, we have Iron Bundle with Booster Energy Speed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it like this for you so you guys can see the stats. Uh, booster Energy Speed, Modest Nature, ton of HP. Um, yeah, I needed the Speed Boost in case of like Scarf Entei, Scarf Lottie, especially Scarf Cart because I think it has to come. I think Scarf Cart is non-negotiable, and if it's like Scarf Trick Rotom, or Scarf Gengar especially, I expect Rotom and Gengar to come and be Scarf. So I needed something that could outspeed both of those, and it just it came down to Iron Bundle, because I'm fairly certain I counted before, I think Ice Beam has a chance. No, Ice Beam always KOs Kartana from full. And freeze dry has a chance if I'm not mistaken, because that mod has 31 spadef. 31. What the hell? <laughs> um, and it's got taunt just cause if I need to taunt a setup move on Entei if it's Carson or something, or it's really for if I get it versus Azu, I don't want that thing belly drawing my face because they have a really really bad time. Oh, speaking of Ozu, um, I'm Terrifier on Salamence to increase Flamethrower base power, resist Bullet Punch, resist Smart Strike or whatever Carton wants to throw at me, but most importantly, resist an Ice Punch or Fairy move from Ozu once and just get Big Chip on it. Now, why would I not go Water? Um... I did not want Kartana to be able to hit me with any attack super effectively. So I went fire. And it'd be it's a little risky with Azu, but I think it's gonna be worth. Um now we got the next Terramon, Expert Belt Jolteon. This thing could become a staple on my team. Expert Belt's just so good. Um I had Life Orb originally, and this is my decade lead because he's been leading Mammo to click rocks. So I think this is gonna be my decade lead. And I just Terra Blast turn one. And if Mammo doesn't come, then I can save my Terra for Salamence. Um, Bolt Switch, because it's like one of the best moves in the game. And I can easily bait in Mammo Swipe and kill it. Um, as other resistors, Kartana and Latios, which don't like to take it. Well, Latios does, but I can always just switch out to something that actually deals with Latios. Um, Thunderbolt, just because it's a struck move. Terror Blast Water for obviously Mammo Swine. And then we can even hit like Entei with it if we need to. Terror Water is also super important to just Bullet Punch and to Aqua Jet from these two that love to spam um, Priority and even Ice Shard from Mammo Swine. So it's super. The defense of Terra's that resist the priorities that this guy has is super important. Um, Max attack, mod, max attack modest, and 224 speed EVs because that covers Latios down. I want to run Quick V again, but I decided that bundle will probably already have Scarf Gengar, Scarf Latios, or Scarf Kartana covered. So I just went Volt Absorb because then Rotom can't really touch me. I figured this might have electric coverage and then that might have thunder punch or something i figured i'd get more use out of it um uh, 32 defense evs just to keep tanking some of those bolt punches or aqua jets i don't think it's may not make a huge difference but it's worth the chance it's better than hp or just maxing up speed uh, next we have a beery berry scream tail which is wish passing or not wish passing wish protecting and I think it's probably supposed to be Wish Pass, but oh well. Um, the Beery Berry Flamethrower takes 50% from Kartana and kills it. it. That's if Kartana has Smart Strike. And I think Leaf Blade also does about 50. And this is no 
defense investment at all. Just max HP and it takes 50 and then kills the biggest threat on their team. And it also does, if he wants to switch and scissor on this thing, flamethrower is doing 75 and then I can kill it back. So this thing's main purpose is to bait in Kartana and Scizor and then wish pass to these two and Ursaluna. Same thing it did week two, but it worked great. So I figured if it's not broken, why fix it? Uh, I th really think Protect is supposed to be the Todd Pass, but I'm not sure. And then we have good old Assault Vest Ursaluna. If you see an Ursaluna on my team, um, I would wager your bets. Assault Vest. Fun fact, Guts would have Guts would have been nice on Ursula for Willow Esprota, but fun fact, Bulletproof AV Ursula literally cannot get touched by Gengar. Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Energy Ball, and Focus Blast all get eaten up by Bulletproof. So it literally does zeros. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't need normal stab once again. Earthquake, Stone Edge, Crunch, Fire Punch. So Earthquake hits everything. Fire Punch was for Cart and Scizor. And with this attack investment, I believe it kills 248 EV Scizor 100% of the time. If it's just 248, 250 to attack. And that's a minimum roll. And then Stone Edge for that pesky Rotom, or Rotom fan that I don't think is going to... Um, Willow me because he's afraid. Also, Rotom's the terror captain, so Scrafty. Uh, I made a big mistake, but it's fine. And then Crunch is just for Latios, so it can never set up versus me. And then Ursaluna takes like 30 from the best attack it can take, or the best attack Latios can dish out. So, yeah, this is the team. Uh, a lot of different sets from week two, kind of. Like different moves, different spreads. The all same mod, all the same goals. Um, I just think it works out super well because you look at this team, you look at my spreads, nothing can beat me. Right? The scariest thing is Scarf Mamoswine, but then I either bait it with um, Terra Fire or I just go and I Hydro Pump it. Like, not a lot of things can beat me. Like it's gonna be a collective effort today. I don't think anything's gonna get four, three, four kills, maybe even two. It's gonna be a spread effort. And so here's the replay. Let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, brought four of the six I was expecting. I was expecting Gengar. I was expecting Scizor. Yeah, and then I kind of I could have seen Rotom Wash. But I'm glad there's no Scizor, even though I brought these two on the left. Because I, pre I prepped for it pretty hard. So let's just get in turn one. You know, I said my dedicated lead was Jolteon. So I follow through with it. He leads Manoswine like I predicted. I Terra Water. He Scarf Earthquake, which uh, I ran a Calc afterwards. It's a roll heavily in my favor, but it's a roll. There's a chance that. I died turn one, wasted my Terra, and that would have put me in a horrendous position. But instead, Jolteon gets the job done. And I calc this too. It takes 21-25% from Aqua Jet. So I switch out to my Decade Physical Stopper. And takes 14, deals Rocky Helmet. Scare him out. I set free rocks because I can then I go into my Latios counter as he sets up a sub. Surf doing 30%. Crunch obviously breaks the sub. Um, so I just crunch again as he switches out. Now, turn 6. He misclicked Pain Split. I don't know what he was going to click. I don't know if he's going to click Will-O-Wisp. But he has said he miss. Um, he, has, he misclicked, and I go for Stone Edge, but he gets rewarded, and I miss the Stone Edge, which, like, fair, because if he misclicks, yeah, I didn't get really take advantage of it. But now he switches out into obvious. I want to Earthquake um, 
but I didn't have the balls. There's no real reason to. So, okay, it just lagged. I switched out into Salamence because this thing deals with it heavily. Knockoff point is 22. And he goes into his Rotom. I Hurricane because I thought he was going to go into Azumarill on a Flamethrower or a Scrafty. So I just clicked Hurricane because I figure it's the better middle ground play. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. So yeah, he switches out. Um, Ice Hurricane. I double back thinking he might T-Bolt or Volt Switch. But he goes for Defog, which means that this gets a free hit. Um, I just T-Bolt. That's... At first, I saw 20%. I'm like, man, this is at least max HP AV. and But it's still good to get chip. I got 40% chip on this thing. If it's it really is AV, then it can't heal back up other than, like, Draining Punch. Which he clicks, switches out. I go for Hurricane... Or I go for Draco again, because I didn't think he... I think he'd switch back out into this. And then... Yep. I switch back out on a Volt Switch, or a Pain Split. As he Pain Splits, I kill this. Uh, I just get Big Chip on Latios because I had the damage. There's no real reason to switch out. Uh, I stack Jolteon because it did all it needed to do for me. Nothing's at 100%. This is low. Big threat. So let's go back to Earth. Or no, I go... Uh, Screamtail, and uh, Dazzling Gleam did not kill... But I clicked it anyways as he goes Azumbro, which can't tell if that's AV or not. But I just go back into the one thing that deals with it, Fortress, as he takes Rocky Helmet damage off of Liquidation, switches back out. I th do I, I do I gyro here? Yeah, I do. I get low. And I go back into Screamtail, which eats Ice Dazzling Gleam, goes into this, which I find weird that. Cartana's not coming out on Screamtail. Uh, but yeah, I just hurricane this to get chip. Ice Punch only does 48. That's comical. That's how I... At that point, I figured out that it was 248, 252 Spadef AV because I only did like 30% and Ice Punch did 48% quad damage. But I just roost it back up because I win this 1v1 barring a crit or a freeze. And he switches back, and I get back to full, switch out into my dedicated Azu counter. He switches back out, it's fine. I, uh, then he incinerates, good bring, it just doesn't do enough, because Scrafty Spatak is awful. So he goes in this, there's no reason for me to risk Beast Boost whenever I have a 99% uh, 99 Salamence that eats every single hit. Watch this. Terrifying Sacred Sword. Leave. Yeah, terrifi Terrifying Sacred Sword. If it wants to go more than three frames per second. 16%. Eat. Eight. Oat. Mr. Hurricane. I sack this to get damage. And then, yeah, I sack this to get damage. And then it was wraps, basically. Because after Rocky Helmet. Bundle just comes in, and even if he's AV, if he's just max HP, I think it takes 50 minimum or something like that. So I just go ahead and clean up with Iron Bundle because I'm stat padding, cheesing. I'm stat padding and cheesing. I'm just trying to get this thing to be MVP. So now it's got 8 kills and 2 or 3 deaths. I think it's 8 and 2, which is great. It's 3rd on the leaderboard. I want to get this thing first. I want this to be the MVP. Uh... Yeah, it is, it is great to get a win back on the books. It's something I've not had in a while, and I, I'm glad my effort could be rewarded because I put an okay amount of time uh, building. I felt like I had a super good matchup, especially after what I did week two. Uh, I just brought a very similar team, and it worked. Um, yeah, GG well played to Petroskowitz. I mean, is our fighting him? He's. I'm telling you, his record does not say how good he is. Um, I I know I played safe, completely after turn one. Base. I bet. Yeah, I just played safe. Played conservative. No need to make any risky plays. And I'm sorry about that roll, but he 
honestly is skilled. There's there's some games where I watch nice plays and he looks like the best player in the division. He's making reads, making calls, doubling, and it's just impressive. But yeah, that was week five of NPBA. Uh, week six, I'm playing my homeboy, Sam Sturgeon. And uh, we actually just did a collab on his channel. Um, it's going to be a super fun game. I'm going to talk my shit because uh, that's how I am. I'm going to talk that talk. Who knows if I walk that walk. But uh, yeah, week five is in the books. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Deuces.